everyone, and welcome back to ASX Market Watch. Thank you very much for joining me, and this week I'm looking at four charts. The first is the ASX Top 200, which I like to use as a barometer for deciding which way the overall market is heading and, um, and which way I should be trading in my own particular trading for individual stocks. Uh, because three out of four stocks, um, William O'Neill has said, uh, will follow the overall market. Um, the next two things I'm looking at after that is at the actual driving forces behind the Australian market at the moment. And one of those is the um, the materials index, so the XMJ, and the other the other is the financials index, and that's the XXJ um, without the without property uh, involved in that one. And those two, I just want to have a look at those two charts and find out which of those two is actually driving the share market at the moment um, and which one is dragging it down. And the last one I want to look at is the Dow Jones. Again, just because the Dow Jones, we tend to take our lead a little bit from the Dow Jones. Um, I think a lot of indices around the world do, um, but uh, Australia in particular and so I just want to have a look at where that could be headed, where we might be finding a bit of resistance in the future, and what we can expect. So thanks again for joining me. Here we have is the ASX Top 200, the XJO. Um, as you can see, all I have done, very, very simple. Um, this is the weekly chart, so each particular bar here, one bar equals one week of time, and over here is about probably about two and a half years. Now, this is the downtrend line, which was crossed in July 2009. It gave us a great bull run for about six months up until around about December. And only just recently, we have crossed our solid uptrend line after bouncing off it a few times, just here. And we've really got our, a solid solid exit signal, really, if you're looking at the daily chart. This is the daily chart here. So as you can see, we've, uh, we've had quite a few lower peaks and lower troughs. Um, at least two, and now the market is, is it's still basically in correction mode. What I was waiting for and what still hasn't happened on the ASX Top 200 is a bounce. Now, what a bounce would mean is uh, that the prices would actually come back up and people would start to get a little bit excited again, and, um, and maybe they'd start calling a bull run, and that, that could happen, but, um, but a bounce, you can only really tell what will happen in a bounce if it makes a lower peak. So... Looking at the weekly chart here, what I would be expecting is for prices to come back up to around the 4,800 level, and this is the level where people will start getting excited again, and it, it's around this level that prices will, you know, if they burst straight through it, then we've got more bullish prices. I'm not personally expecting that, but you just can't tell in the markets. It's, it's an unpredictable thing, so you just have to take it as it comes. Um, but if it does form a lower trough, then we would have... A potential Dow Theory exit, and that would give me a bit of a signal for a bear market. Why would that be a signal for a bear market? Because back in 2007, round about here, um, 2007, round about December, we got our Dow Theory exit, which is um, our lower peak and lower trough, and prices went through the lower trough, and that was our exit signal for the bear market over 2008. So that's what I'm expecting or hoping for. I mean, really, it's not healthy if prices just go down or continue to go down. They really do need to bounce and they need to pause. Um, this usually happens. So that's what I'm expecting to happen. But again, it is the market. It's an unpredictable thing. So, well, uh, as I said, all you can do is take it as it comes. Now, the next two charts, the first one is the materials index. And this is a weekly chart of the materials index, the XMJ. As you can see, it hasn't made, uh, this is a weekly chart, so it hasn't made a, a, a solid close below the weekly chart trend line, the uptrend line. So it's actually closed above it just recently on Friday. Um, this says to me that the materials index is still in an uptrend. Now, if you look at this in comparison to the financials index, this is the XXJ, um, and this is the financial index here, so all your banks and that sort of thing, uh, maybe insurance as well. Uh, as you can see, we've got our lower peak and lower trough. So it hasn't quite traded through the previous trough as yet, or closed below it, but it's so close it's just ridiculous. So really, it's the financials at the moment that is dragging the, um, the Australian market down, and it's the materials that is holding it up. Now, this makes perfect sense if you uh, listen to... John Murphy, who does, uh, he has a book called Intermarket Analysis. In that, he um, he basically says that bonds lead stocks, which lead commodities. So what we're seeing at the moment, um, if you follow that analysis, is that pro that is that the um, the financials 
uh, which would be the second stage or the first and second stage of that cycles analysis, they are basically leading the materials, which is still heading upwards, but you'd probably expect to see it fall last out of the three. So again, it makes perfect sense if you do subscribe to that analysis, uh, which I do personally. So, um, so I mean, it's always nice when the markets do make sense. <laughs> um, and sometimes you just need to have a little bit more knowledge for things to actually start making sense. But what I'd be expecting is um, if the banks do keep on falling, then eventually we'd see the materials fall in line with that, but they would be the last in the cycle. Um, so that would be your stocks like Rio, BHP. Um, again, those are those are still in uptrends uh, at the moment. They're hanging by a thread, a lot of them. Um, but yeah, they're, they're still actually kicking along okay. Now, I hope that's helped. And the last one I want to look at is the Dow Jones. The Dow Jones, again, a great barometer for looking at where, because it does give a bit of a lead to the, um, to the ASX Top 200 and the Australian market in general. And this is the mega downtrend line. Uh, this is the long-term downtrend line. As you can see, it started in late 2007, went all the way till just recently um, in January 2010. Now, this is a daily chart that we're looking at, by the way. And this is where it crossed it. So it did cross that trend line. I was expecting it to find resistance. And what's happened is it has gone up a little bit past it, but it couldn't go much past it. So it couldn't go a long way past it. What that means is that this longer term downtrend line, as you can see, it's still in place. So what I would be expecting from the Dow Jones, even if we were to get more bullish prices out of the Dow Jones, it would have still be finding heavy resistance at around the 10,500 to 10,700 level. Um, and this is because that downtrend line, that longer term downtrend line is still in place. It really hasn't um, burst through that line yet. Um, what has happened, however, is it has crossed the longer term uptrend line, which to me gives the signal of a correction. Um, again, I probably, this was in a market watch three weeks ago um, when we first called the correction and it's basically been correcting ever since. Same with the all ordinaries, I would be expecting, if we're looking at a weekly chart, this particular chart here, each bar is one week, I'd be expecting a bounce um, on this one as well, which would give us a Dow Theory exit, hopefully. Uh, again, you can't predict the market. Well, I mean, you can try, but um, you know, most people still only get it right 50% of the time. And what I'd be expecting on the Dow Jones is an up bar, so one of these green bars, in other words, which would signal um, a higher high and a higher low than the previous bar and then for price to actually trade back down again. That would be a full-on bear signal for me, um, according to Dow Theory. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for stopping by. That's four charts, and um, that gives a great overlook of the overall economy in Australia, uh, well, you know, based on the market and the charts anyway. And um, the market does tend to lead the overall economy by around about six months, so that is a fantastic thing to look out for. If things start breaking down, then maybe we'll see the economy start to break down a little bit as well. Um, it does happen you know, with quite, reg uh, quite a, a nice regularity. So again, thanks so much for stopping by. Guys, it's really great to have you here, and it's great to have you learning, and I love chatting about the markets. So it's always good. I love doing these things. It is really excellent. Um, again, hopefully I'll see you next week.